So, next problem tayo. Another software problem. A carpenter carries a 6 kilogram uniform board as shown. So, meron daw carpenter na may daladalang board. Ito. Ang weight daw ng board, all in all, ay 6 kilogram. Pero again, uniform daw yung weight niya. Ibig sabihin lang nun, uniformly distributed all throughout the length. Unang hinahanap sa tanong ay yung free body diagram ng idealized model. And then, what downward force does he feel on his shoulder at A? Yan yung pangalawang tanong. And last question is, what force does he exert at B to prevent the board from overturning about his shoulder? So, isa-isayin natin sagutin yung mga tanong na yan. Unayin na natin yung free body diagram ng idealized model. Again, yung board can be idealized as a line na lang. Since ang importante lang naman dyan sa board na yan is yung length nya. Basta mapakita lang natin yung length nya, then it is already sufficient enough to analyze the board. So, to represent the length of the board, ito na lang siya. Represent na lang natin siya as a line. Pero, ang kailangan natin ay yung free body diagram niya. So, we have to draw here the external forces acting on the, uh, the board. Ngayon, kung mapapansin nyo, kapag magdodraw ka ng free body diagram, uh, again, by definition, when you space a free body diagram, ina-isolate natin yung dinodrawing natin na free body diagram from being connected to this carpenter. So, kapag na-disconnect yan dito, ibig sabihin, mag magkakaroon, ma-disconnect yung connection ng board sa shoulder ng carpenter, tsaka sa kamay ng carpenter. So, kung ma-disconnect yan, according to our discussion, merong lalabas na internal forces. And, if you can recall, kung, or kung may imagine mo kung anong kind ng connection tong mga to, uh, actually, yung connection sa point A and B can be idealized as frictionless surface kasi yung board nakapatong lang naman sa, sa shoulder. Ganun din yung kamay. So, katulad lang siya nito. Parang yung member nito nakapatong lang sa surface nito. So, kapag tinanggal natin yung surface from being connected to the member, ang lalabas according to this table ay isang single force directed always perpendicular dun sa contacting surface. Where in, in this case, kung yun ay imagine mo kung itura ng contacting surface between the board and the shoulder and the, the hand, the, the, the force must be uh, perpendicular dito sa axis ng board. So, kung tinanggal natin yung board dyan, separate natin, niligay natin dito, na-disconnect sa point A, so dapat merong lalabas na internal force which is something like this. Yan acting at point A. Again, dapat perpendicular dun sa surface kung saan sila in contact. Tawagin ko na lang yan, force na yan, since vertical yan, at acting din sa point A. Tawagin na lang natin yan na AV. And, yung sa, sa point B naman, again, tinanggal natin, dinisconnect natin yung board sa hand sa point B, so may lalabas na internal force, which is according to this table, Again, single force perpendicular sa contacting surface with it, which is this. So, ang lalabas dyan is a single force na naman perpendicular to the axis of the board. And, tawagin na lang natin yung force na yan na lumabas nung sinaparate natin yung board sa hand. Since nasa point B siya at siya ay vertical in direction, tawagin na lang natin yan na PV. So, yung mga dimension na yan na nakalagay dyan, copy lang natin. This is point 0.6. This is 0.3 meters. So, okay na ba? Nadrawing na ba natin yung free body diagram ng board? Para may kulang na naman. Alimutan na naman natin yung 6 kg uniform board. So, anong ibig sabihin nun? Ibig sabihin lang nun, yung weight ng board ay uniformly distributed all throughout its length. Pero again, dito sa particular question na to, medyo bless na naman tayo kasi binigay na yung resultant ng maraming distributed load na yan, which is, according to the question, as a magnitude of 6 kg. Eh, alam natin na yung resultant na yan, itong distributed load, ay eh, acting sa centroid, itong pressure diagram, treated as geomet geometric shape, which is rectangle. So, nasa gitna lang yung centroid niya. And, ano ba yung gitna nitong length na to? 1.5 plus 0.6 plus 0.3. Uh, 
2.4 divided by 2. So, this must be located 1.2 meters from the end. So, since resultant na ito na itong distributed loading na ito, pwede na natin tanggalin yung distributed loading para hindi ma-double-double yung analysis. So, okay na. Na-drawing na natin yung free body diagram. Let's try to uh, find out na lang ano yung mga values na ito, mga unknown na ito. So, again, ano ba yung bala natin para masakutan natin yung mga unknown na ito? Siyempre, babalik lang tayo lagi sa statics which states na kung ito ay in equilibrium, sabihin walang movement. Obvious naman, walang movement eh. Di ba? Hindi naman sila, di ba gumagalaw yung carpenter? Tingnan mo, hindi nga, hindi nga gumagalaw yung paa niya. Steady lang siya eh. So, in equilibrium lang siya. So, sabi sa statics, if this is in equilibrium, therefore, dapat yung resultant force acting on this ay equal to zero. Yan. Yung resultant force acting on that must be equal to zero. Or kung gagawin natin in terms of component, dapat yung horizontal component na resultant equal to zero. Pati na rin yung vertical component. And again, lastly, hindi lang yan na dapat natin satisfy for, for the conditions of equilibrium. Dapat, sa mission din ng resultant or, or, or resultant moment then at any point dapat equal to 0. So again, sa ganitong ano, condition, ang uh, pinaka best na gamitin natin na uh, condition of equilibrium or equation of equilibrium ay yung moment, yung resultant moment at any point equal to 0. So, since ang hinahanap niya is yung force acting on the shoulder, which is point A, so, dapat ang makuha natin mo ng value ay yung AV. So, saan ba makakanda mag-moment? Ang sa ganun, makuha agad natin yung value ng AV without having another unknown. So, sa point B. Point B maganda mag-moment. Kasi pag sa point B ka nag-moment, yung BV walang moment sa point B. So, AV na lang yung matitirang unknown. But then again, pinakamahalaga is sign convention when answering this kind of problem and dapat consistent ka lang sa sign convention mo. So, in this case, kung sinabi mong clockwise moments are positive, dapat lahat talaga ng clockwise moments na ilalagay mo sa equation mo will be ha will have a sign of positive. <coughs> so, yun. I-moment na natin yung mga forces about point P. So, ang may moment na lang sa point B ay yung AV tsaka yung 6 kg. So, moment natin yung AV sa point B. So, moment is equal to force AV times moment R which is 0.6. So, ito siya. So, ang direction ng moment niya about point B ay, paano yung direction na yan? That is clockwise. So, dapat ang sign niya ay positive. Next is yung 6 kg moment natin sa point B. So, moment is equal to 6 uh, magnitude times the moment arm. Ano yung moment arm ng 6 with respect sa point B? Ano tong length na to? If this is 1.2 meters and this is 0.3 meters, therefore, this is 1.2 meters minus 0.3. And paano yung direction ng moment na 6 kg sa point B? That is, paano yung direction niyan? Counter, clockwise. So, dapat siya ay negative kasi nga yung clockwise yung sinabi natin na positive. So, ang unknown na lang dyan ay AV. So, ito for AV. Therefore, makakuha mo ay 9 kg. Ang sign ay positive. So, ano na namang ibig sabihin ng positive na yan? Ibig sabihin lang nun, yung assumed direction ko dito ng AV ay tama. Upward talaga yung AV. But then, again, ang inahanap ay force. So, convert lang natin to into force. Multiply sa G. 9.81 meter per second squared. Ang lalabas ay 88.29 newton. Again, don't forget to write the direction ng force because force is a vector as a magnitude and direction. So, ito yan, yung AV na yan. Ito yan yung force na ina-exert ng shoulder dito sa board. Pero ang hinahanap kasi natin, yung force na ina-exert ng board sa shoulder. So, obviously, yung force na yan is just the same magnitude as this force but opposite, uh, opposite in direction. So, the correct answer will be this. The, can, the carpenter feels a downward force of 88.29 newton on his shoulder and saan galing yung 88.29 newton na yun? Galing yun dito sa board. Yun yung ina-apply na force ng board sa shoulder. 
lastly, last na question is, ano yung value na to? Yung BV, nakuha na natin yung AV. Ano naman yung value ng AV? Ano ba yung, ano ba yung BV na yan? Yan yung force that is exerted ng carpenter at point B that prevents the board from rotating about point A. Yan yung, yan yung force na yan eh. Kaya hindi bumabalin tong tong board about sa shoulder no carpenter is because hawak-hawak niya yung board dito sa point B at may in-exert siya na force dyan sa point B which is, we call it BV. So, ibig sabihin lang na, yung force acting on B is the force that prevents this board from rotating about point A. So, uh, again, kung naalala nyo, ito ang ibig sabihin ng moment. Moment is the tendency to rotate. So, ibig sabihin lang nun, kung walang tendency to rotate yung whole structure natin about point A. So, dapat, ang, da ang summation dapat ng moment kay point A ay equal to 0. So, dapat pag yung moment ako kay point A, ang, sa ang, moment, ang summation dapat ng moment kay point A is equal to 0. Ibig sabihin lang nun, the board has no tendency to rotate about point A. Hindi siya babalentong dyan. So, pwedeng ganun yung gamitin mo ang equation. Gamit ang result of moment equation. Pwedeng ganun. Ayan, pwede kang gumawa ng ganyan. Palitan mo lang yung B na ang A. Pero dito sa papakita ko na lang, mas much easier sa pagkuha ng value ng BB is gamitin mo itong equation na to, which is summation ng vertical forces must be equal to 0. Mas madali kasi mag-sum up na ng mga forces kaysa yung magmo-moment ka pa. Kasi pag nag-moment ka pa, meron pa moment arm na isasama sa computation. Unlike so, magsasummation ng forces ka na lang, eh, puro forces na lang yung iintindin mo. So, tignan natin lahat ng vertical forces dyan. Ano-ano yun? 6 kg A, which ka BV. So, summation daw dapat yung tatlo na yan, equal to 0. With the sign convention na lahat ng upward forces will be positive. So, ano ba yung mga upward forces dito? A, V, tsaka BV. So, yung sign nila dapat ay positive and then yung 6 ay negative because it is directed downward. So, yung sum nila dapat ay equal to 0. But, we already know the value of AV, 9 kg. So, satsikit na lang natin dyan. So, therefore, BV will be equal to negative 3 kg. So, ano ibig sabihin ng negative? Ibig sabihin lang nun, yung inasyong kong direction dito ay baliktad pala talaga. Dapat. So, hindi pala dapat upward ang direction na BV, kundi downward pala talaga dapat according to this computation kasi nag-negative. So, therefore, ang BV, kung i-convert mo yung 3 kg sa Newton para maging force, multiply sa G, that will be equal to 29.43 Newton. Ang direction niya ay downward. So, kaya narek ko na yung direction niya dito sa pagsulat ng BV. So, hindi talaga siya upward, that must be downward kasi nga negative yung nakuha natin. So, ano yung downward force na yan? Yan yung force na ina-apply dun sa board ng hand. Kaya, hindi bumabalintong yung board about the shoulder no carpenter. So, yan yung answer dito sa second, second question na tong problem. So, yun. Just to summarize the discussion, just to wrap up things sa discussion natin na to, uh, summarize lang natin ano yung mga natutunan natin on this discussion. Una, tutunan natin na when we are analyzing a real structure, meron palang mga detalye about that real structure na hindi naman pala natin talaga kailangan in order for us to completely analyze that particular structure. So, meron palang mga tinatawag na unnecessary details, yung structure na yun, na hindi naman natin kailangan para ma-analyze siya. So, ang ginagawa natin, yung mga unnecessary details na yan, we usually discard that. And, ang nire-retain lang natin ay yung mga information na necessary for us to be able to completely analyze the structure. And, yung matitirang information na yun, dun sa structure, yung mabubuong structure with those ret uh, retaining information, ang tawag dun sa structure na yun na natira ay yung analytical model ng structure o yung idealized structure which is which is the representation of the real structure using line diagram 
So, yung idealized structure na yun, or yung idealized, or, or, yung, or yung, yung analytical model na yun, yun yung model, or yung, yun yung structure, na ang laman lang niya ay yung mga necessary details for us to be able to analyze that particular real structure. Next thing na tututunan natin on this discussion ay yung different uh, types of connection and yung definition ng connection itself. And eh, natutunan natin na ang connection pala, yun pala yung dahilan bakit hindi nagkakalas-kalas sa ang isang structure because it is that thing that binds the members or parts of the structure together. It is the, the thing that holds the structure together. So, meron, natutunan natin in this discussion na merong different types of connections which are characterized by the internal force na lalabas kapag itong mga particular connections na to ay dinisconnect natin from being connected to a body or a member. So, ano-ano yung mga different types of connection na yon na napag-aralan natin which is again characterized by, by the internal force na lalabas kapag dinisconnect natin siya on being connected to a member or a body. So, yung mga common types na yon ay roller connection, pin or hinge connection, and rigid or fixed connection. Yun yung madalas na ginagamit natin sa civil engineering. Lastly, last na natutunan natin dito sa discussion na to ay yung iba't ibang classification ng frame structure. So, natutunan din natin na ang frame structure pala ay composed of straight members whose lengths are significantly larger than their cross-sectional dimension. So, yung mga frame structures pala, ito pala yung mga bagay na yung length niya, yung haba niya, yung length niya, compared yun sa cross-sectional dimensions niya, is significantly larger. So, mas mahaba yung length kaysa dun sa dimension ng cross-sectional area niya. So, natutunan din natin dito sa discussion na to, yung mga anim na classification ng frame structure, which are yung plane and space trusses, beams and grids, and plane and space frames. So, yan yung mga tutunan natin on this uh, discussion. So, ito, for, just for you to, again, have or practice solving on finding the reaction of uh, different structure or different bodies. So, bigyan ko lang kayo dito ng mga problems for practice. Yeah. So, try nyo lang to sagutan sa bahay. Again, wala naman tong score. Ang goal lang dito ay uh, ma-experience yung sagutan yung mga ganitong types of problem. Yan. So, try nyo lang. Try nyo lang sagutan itong mga problem na to. Usually, ang inanap lang naman dito ay mga reaction lang naman. And for you to be able to solve reaction, dapat alam nyo yung different types of connections. Yan. So, try nyo lang yan. Try nyo lang sa bahay nyo. Try nyo lang isolve as, as, as possible. And again, yung mga sagot naman dito, uh, nandito rin. Nandito rin sa presentation na to. Ito. Ito yung mga sagot dan. Mga nakared. So, after mo i-try isolve, try to check yung mga sagot mo na nakuha dito sa mga nakared na to. Tignan mo kung tama yung mga nakuha mo sagot. Kung medyo may magkaiba, try to recheck your solution. Or baka, ano, mas baka masyado lang eksakto yung nakuha mong sagot. Kasi yung mga sagot na nilagay ko dito, medyo hindi to masyadong sakto. Hindi masyadong sakto yan. Kung baga, medyo rounded off na yan. Rounded off. So, baka na-expect mo dapat saktong-sakto yung sagot mo dito. So, hindi naman. Hindi naman saktong-sakto yan. Rounded off yan. Usually, rounded off. So, huwag kakalimutan yung pag-indicate ng direction. Especially pag we are talking about force and movements because they are vectors as magnitude and direction. So, yun. That is all for this particular discussion. I hope you have learned something. Again, if you have any questions or if you have any concern, don't hesitate to contact me. You know my details. You know how to contact me. So, wag mayihiyang magtanong. 
and again have a good day